Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ministry of Guitar YouTube channel. This is Utkarsh coming to you from Singapore. And today we have for you what I consider, if you had to have one guitar, electric and acoustic, if you just had to invest in one guitar, what guitar would it be that could see you through everything you would ever want to do? And for me, the answer to that question is just one resounding answer. And the answer to that question is the PRS Custom 24 Piezo. So we're going to go through the uh, the history of this model, the origination, the specs, uh, how I got to get this particular guitar. Uh, we're going to go through the sounds. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to give you a final summary of my thoughts as usual. So the Custom 24 Piezo uh, is not the first Piezo guitar that, uh, that PRS did. They really started doing Piezo guitars, I would say, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And they had Piezo on the, uh, on the hollow body. Uh, they did bring it over to their custom models. Um, they launched something that was called the P24. Uh, and I think the P22 at a similar time. This was in the early 2010s. And what it really was, was a custom 24 or a custom 22, but with a piezo on a stop tail. And the stop tail uh, was, of course, kind of the preferred choice for piezo. You didn't really have piezo on tremolo guitars, unless you're thinking about Ernie Ball, Music Man, uh, John Petrucci guitars. A couple of years later, they brought it out on the uh, on the tremolo, on the PRS, the excellent PRS tremolo. And a few years later, they renamed the whole thing from Custom 24, uh, sorry, from P24, P22 to Custom 24 Piezo and Custom 22 Piezo. Um, and differences between a Custom 24 and Custom 22 Piezo really boil down to, sorry, between a Custom 24 and, and a, a regular Custom 24 and a Custom 24 Piezo, boils down to, of course, the introduction of the under saddle. Well, under saddle as in on the bridges, there are uh, those um, piezo pickups that can pick up the sounds, as well as the thickness of the guitar, which is slightly thicker, McCarty thickness, as well as two output jacks instead of one. So that's what makes, um, that's what differentiates it. And we get a little bit into the controls. The concept of this guitar is very, very simple, which is to give you in a live setting and frankly, in, in, even in a recording setting with the right kind of um, after effects, uh, an electric and an acoustic guitar in one, all the guitar you would ever need. Uh, the Custom 24 to begin with is a guitar that covers a lot of ground, which we'll talk a little bit about as we go through the specs and the sound. And the acoustic just makes it the complete guitar. I was attracted to this guitar for the reason I gave at the beginning of the, vi of the video, which is when playing with my band, and I've played many different uh, guitars with my band, starting, of course, with my Epiphone Les Paul, Gibson Les Pauls, PRS 594. Uh, what I realized is that you can't really get an authentic acoustic sound with an electric guitar unless you have a piezo. And even then, it's not a perfect, but it's good enough. In fact, most live bands that you see, the acoustics that they're playing, you're not really hearing the mic'd up acoustic, you are hearing the piezo, so it's kind of there. So for me, I wanted one guitar that could do it all. I love the Custom 24 because it is just such a playable guitar with the 24 frets. Not that I use the 24th fret, but one thing that I've realized is it makes playing the other frets easier. Access is so much better. So because of that, I've been gravitating to 24 fret guitars. Hence the Custom 24 Piezo was almost like an automatic choice. And I actually got two of them, maybe in an inspired moment because I was looking for something very particular. I was looking for something with an ebony fretboard, which is generally my preference and something with a pattern regular neck and PRS had discontinued the pattern regular neck from 2019-ish. And in a space of a couple of months, I came across two guitars, this one and another one in violet, both with the perfect spec, which is they had a pattern regular neck and ebony fretboard. So I grabbed both of them. I'll probably go through the violet one at a different time in a different review. What I do with these two guitars is these two guitars are the guitars that I play while jamming with, I have many guitars as you can see, but these two guitars are the ones that I play while jamming with my band. This is the perfect live guitar. This is the perfect band guitar. I keep one in E standard and the other one in E flat because uh, actually I play with a couple of bands and one band sticks to E flat and the other one kind of goes in between. So I have kind of have both guitars with me and it's perfect. It gets you every sound you need. It'll not be the perfect Strat position four. It'll not be the perfect Les Paul next sound, but it'll be 95% there, particularly with the right settings through a Helix or something. So this is what I use the guitar for. So let's get into the specs of this particular 
guitar. Uh, this is the 2021 uh, Custom 24, 21, right? Yes, 2021 Custom 24 Piezo artist package. Uh, what makes this special is it's uh, the artist package is now discontinued and the artist package essentially provides slightly upgraded words. It's something in between a core PRS guitar and a private stock. Slightly better tops, special options such as an ebony fretboard. That's what an artist pack is. And in this particular guitar's case, it even has this beautiful stain binding, which is a custom option. So we are going to talk about the specs of this guitar and I'll point out where the differences are versus a regular custom 24 piezo that you can buy today. Starting off with construction, this is a typical PRS formula of a mahogany body uh, with a mahogany neck and a flame maple cap. Uh, there is on this guitar a rosewood fretboard, sorry, a ebony fretboard instead of a rosewood fretboard and an ebony veneer instead of a rosewood veneer. So that's one artist pack difference. Um, when you think about the size and the, the you know, the, the, the scale length of the guitar, this is 25 inch, similar to you would have on a standard PRS scale, which is in between a Les Paul and a Strat. Uh, it has 24 frets because it is a custom 24 at the end of the day. Uh, and the neck on this particular guitar is what's called a pattern regular. Uh, you can refer to this bit in my Tremonti video where we, we talk about the differences between the different uh, PRS neck sizes. But pattern regular is essentially a Goldilocks neck that anybody can enjoy. That's what I consider it. It's not fat, it's not thin, it's the perfect neck. Sadly, you do not get custom 24s with this neck anymore. You only get it with a pattern thin neck. But even the pattern thin neck is not a thin neck. It's just thinner than regular PRS necks. So the, don't be put off by the naming in case thin necks are not your thing. At the same time, if Ibanez necks are your thing, pattern thin would suit you just fine. Like other custom 24s, this is a dual humbucker guitar. These are 8515 pickups, TCI. And what that means is 8515 stands for the year they're inspired by, which is 1985. The year they came out, 2015. TCI is tuned capacitance inductance, which is the process that PRS uses. What does this all mean for you? It just means that these are extremely neutral, mid middle output Goldilocks pickups. They can do everything. They can snarl, they can be low gain. It's the most versatile pickup that you can get with a five-way switch. We'll talk a little bit about what each switch does in a second. Uh, what is additional on this guitar is that it has the additional on top of the master tone and master volume and the master tone, it also has a piezo volume slash piezo blend and an extra mini switch to toggle between different modes of the piezo. Uh, hardware on this particular guitar is hybrid hardware. This is an option that you typically get on 10 tops or on artist packages. So this is something you would not get on a regular core. You would just get a plain nickel. This is a mixture of gold and nickel. Tuners, this is the same tuners that you would get on a regular custom 24. These are locking tuners. Uh, phase three, PRS phase three locking tuners and beautiful with the, you know, with the easy to lock mechanism on the top as well as the, as well as the gear, uh, open gear kind of layout at the back. And then talking a little bit about the frets, these are about medium sized standard PRS frets. The birds on this guitar on their beautiful ebony fretboard are uh, I think they're a mixture of mother of pearl and abalone. I'm not really sure. I'm not really that fussed about uh, inlay material, but artist packs do have an upgraded inlay material versus a regular core. So that's another difference that you should be aware of in case you like the look of the inlays on this particular guitar. What else? I think another detail that is beautiful on PRS is the exposed binding, in which case this particular guitar's case, it is colored uh, like the top, which is a charcoal. PRSs from about 2019 or 2020 come with nitro over CAB finish. Previously, they used to come with, uh, uh, you know, like a poly, a very thin poly, almost gives you a dipped in glass look. But you can expect nitro, which means it is a little less durable than poly, but no problem at all actually compared to some other more, uh, more, uh, more fragile nitro finishes. Okay. So that's about the specs of this guitar. Let's talk about the controls a little bit and then we'll get into the sounds.
This is a five-way switch. The, let's start with position five, position one rather. Position one is of course bridge. Position two is a combination of the bridge, humbucker and the next single coil in parallel. Position three are both humbuckers in parallel. Position four are both single coils in parallel. Position five is neck humbucker. So how do you make sense of this? Position five uh, is of course neck humbucker as you would expect. Position four is like, trying to get something like a position four on a strat, right? It's not really getting you that sound, but in the live setting with in front of an audience, frankly, it's close enough. Uh, you, you know, of course you can get a strat and be perfectly authentic, but this will get 85, 90% there. Position three is that standard Les Paul middle position, which we all love. Position four is, position two is where you get the funk out, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it's the thinnest sound of the lot. And position one is, of course, full bloody bridge humbucker. Master volume, master tone. Three-way switch for the piezo. So topmost, you're going to have only piezo. Middle, you're going to have piezo plus, uh, uh, plus magnetic. And at the bottom, you're going to have magnetic only. In the middle position, this will blend between piezo and magnetic. And in the top position, it'll just be piezo volume. You do have two output jacks. One output jack is a blend between the piezo and the magnetic. The other one is piezo only. So what that does is it gives you the ability to connect this to two amplifiers or two systems. So you can have only acoustic coming from one side and a blend coming from the other side. There are many combinations that you can do. One band that is a particularly good proponent of this is Opeth. In fact, I would say the custom 24 piezo guitar is pra practically designed for Opeth because they go from crazy metal to beautiful acoustic interludes and they do it seamlessly thanks to this guitar which is what they they play almost exclusively now and other with, uh, along with other PRS models. Okay, so let's listen to the sounds. Uh, let's start off with something clean. I'm going to run through all five positions on the magnetic as well as the piezo. <laughs> As you can tell, uh, the the pickups, it really can do any application. It is not as warm as a Les Paul sound. It is not as bright as a PR, as a Strat sound. It is perfect in, in the middle and it can be tone, tuned to any sound that you want. It's also a little bit hi-fi. It doesn't have, uh, has a lot of clarity, which lends itself well because you can always add distortion. You can always add fuzziness. You can't remove it. So the clarity of this pickups are well appreciated. And I'm sure that's what you would have heard you know, all through the five positions. Let's hear some uh, distorted sounds uh, marshaled with the tube screamer uh, on the five positions. <laughs> So again, it doesn't sound dramatically different in each of the positions. I think the general PRS musicality remains across the board. Uh, so this is the general electric guitar sound. This guitar, of course, does uh, gain very well. And all my videos, of course, have a gain section because that's what I do. So let's check that out. 
Clarity, right? And as you've probably heard through that chord progression where I was playing the some some sort of form of open E minor into D sharp minor with the open string ringing out, you can hear the clarity. And this is not through a particularly bright amplifier. This is through a PRS Archon, which is kind of Mesa Boogie-ish, which is, you know, we all know Mesa Boogies are not that bright. So the clarity of these pickups is pretty evident. And I think the clarity of these pickups is the reason why the PRS Archon is a little bit more on the darker side because they, they blend together really, really well. Now I'm gonna show you what's special about this guitar. Uh, in the introduction to this video, you would have heard the bit of the acoustic sound. Now, to be clear, I'm not an expert in dialing an acoustic sound. You'll probably hear demos on the internet much better. But hopefully the beginning of the video, if you didn't hear it, just go back there again. You can hear this through a strumming kind of a sound, on top of which I play with my magnetic pickups. <laughs> And that's great, but the unique strength of this guitar really is the blend of the piezo and the magnetic, and that gives you this beautiful sound that is clear yet warm and cuts through despite a lot of ambience. So I'm very fond of playing ambient-ish guitar. And what you will hear over here through a few examples that I will show you is with delay, with reverb, washing all over the place, you can still hear the guitar, you can still hear the definition. So this is gonna be a slightly extended section just for this guitar, but. Listen, listen to it and you'll get a good sense of the beautiful sound. And you try doing that on any other guitar which doesn't have a piezo blend in it, you're not gonna get there. Either you're not gonna be able to hear the guitar notes or it'll be too bright if you just have a plain piezo. So that is the unique strength of this guitar on top of being able to sound like an electric and an acoustic at the same time. Now that we're done with the sounds, let me give you my overall summary and final thoughts on this guitar. So as I said, this particular guitar, along with its Violet brother sister, is my main band guitar. And that is really what this guitar is all about. Even whether it's a band or whether it's a studio application, this is the one guitar that can do everything. It's not going to do everything perfectly. It's not a 513, which can get very close to an authentic Strat sound and very close to an authentic Les Paul sound. This is not gonna get authentic, but for, for a musical application, for your audience, 
and 99.9% of audience is not sitting and analyzing the perfect guitar tone. They just want something that's about there. This does it. So this really is the one guitar that is perfect for if you really want to invest in one guitar. And the reason I keep coming back to that example is I did something similar. Uh, so I had a custom 22 piezo before I had the two custom 24s. And this is when I went a little bit mad and I said I want custom 24s because of the 22 frets, 20, because the easy ease of playing the upper frets and also because Opeth. So I had to sell my custom 22 piezo, which was an amazing guitar. And I actually sold it to somebody who was looking to buy one guitar for his son. The son had only played one guitar previously, an acoustic guitar, which was an old family relic. Some regular, don't, not even know, sure what brand it is, but the guitar was 40 years old. And he wanted to invest in one guitar that could do everything for his son because they can't buy a $4,000, $5,000 guitar every day. And he, his research had led him to the custom 24, custom Piezo, uh, the PRS Piezo guitars. And he was absolutely right. His research was correct. And he was delighted to have that particular uh, custom 22 Piezo. And yeah, I couldn't think of a better uh, application for a guitar. That's exactly what it is. If you, these are not cheap guitars. And if you really have to invest in something that can take you through gigs, it can last you a lifetime and multiple lifetimes because PRS build quality is just amazing. You have to think that there aren't many guitars that are better than this. I could think of, of course, the Music Man, uh, John Petrucci guitars. And I think they are also a different flavor on the same concept. But for me, the PRS is much more in between a uh, Les Paul and a Strat. Whereas for me, the Music Man tend to... Maybe the Majesty is a little bit different, but Majesty is so overtly modern and it doesn't really have the same kind of switching like a PRS. And honestly, I prefer the sound of the PRS Piezo. So while the Majesty JP6 or the uh, Majesties or the GP6s are similar, I think the PRSs are cut above, my opinion only. I'm very biased, I love PRSs, just look behind me. So that's what this guitar is. This guitar is that one investment that you want to make, the guitar that can do everything. Frankly, if you have one of these and you have a Helix, Forget all the new news that comes, oh, this pedal, this guitar, this whatever. You don't need anything else. No nonsense musician. This is really all you need. It's an expensive investment, but it is completely worth it. So if you are on the fringe of considering a custom 24 or a custom 24 piezo, and you do play your more than your fair share of acoustic, and particularly you do env envision a situation live where you'd be playing it, I would highly recommend to go for the piezo option if you can find one and uh, you will not be disappointed. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Uh, till next time.